Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Almost Pro Wrestling with me, Chloe, right here in the Shield Pro Studio. What a night we had at Shield Anniversary when we made history as new champions were crowned in every division, as well as a brand new Shield Pro Wrestling Heavyweight Champion. We're going to head straight to the arena now, where the new Almost Pro Champion Oliver Barrett defends the title for the first time against none other than Nikki Starr. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another exciting episode of Shield Pro Wrestling presents Almost Pro. I am James Paslapan and I am joined on commentary by your commentary champion, Stallion. That's right, the man with the gold in the commentary box is here to bring you the match that involves, well, Nikki Starr's chance to go for the Almost Pro gold. Yes, we're kicking off with Almost Pro Championship action as Oliver Barrett, the new Almost Pro Champion, defends for the first time against the man that won the 15-man Battle Royal at Shield Anniversary, Nikki Starr. That's not the music that I'm expecting. The ring announcement sounds confused. Well, that's rabbit. What is going on here? And he seems to be telling Nick to start to get out. And he's got his glasses on, so he must mean business. <laughs> Is it, is it official you can't sell this much? It's not happening. It's not happening. Why? It's not happening. Why? You'll find well, why get back. Why is it not happening? You know what? Why? Has he not done his homework? Has he not done his chores? He's not taking the bin out? Nicky, I do have to ask you to vacate the ring if you're not partaking in the match. I, I, I don't know why. I will find out. I'll find out for you. I will find out for well, you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it looks as though our scheduled oh, almost pro championship match will not be happening tonight. Oh. Rabbit pulled Nicky Star from the match. I'm curious. Well, I hope it's an explanation for why Rabbit pulled Nicky Star from his scheduled title match a little later on. In the meantime, let's go back to the arena where Tribad have organised a little championship celebration. This I am very much looking forward to. Oh, and you're ever wondering why I wear sunglasses in doors? This is the 
this is the exact reason why. Because all of that gold is just blinding me. Yes, this was always bound to happen. Having the witness try bad come out with every championship. I've been dreading this moment since Shield Adversary. Well, I thought you meant it was about to happen that Tribad would have all of the championships. And you know what? That wouldn't be a bad prediction. With the talent, the ability, the presence that these guys bring. It's a pleasure to be part of their celebration. Of course, why not set up a celebration when your pack schedule title match just got cancelled? some tips. That's drama. We never lie. We said we were taking over Shield Pro Wrestling. What have we done? We took over Shield Pro Wrestling. We said we would get the tag belts. What have we done? We got the tag belts. Every single one of you peasants, you doubt us every single month just because we do things our own way. Where's my confetti cannons? Where's our celebration? Sheila Bershey, they went off twice at the right time. At the right time. Where's our celebration? We are the new tag team champions. And I am the new all pro champion. And poor Nicky Star, you know, shut the hell up. That's all when you shut up, right? This is your champion speaking. You used to be quiet and all beer me. Shut up, I said you'd be quiet. Too many stars got a neck injury. So I'm not even scared. Your new champion is not even scheduled for a match. I said your new champion is not even scheduled for a damn match. Now I shall fight anyone tonight because I'm so confident in my skills because I am the best wrestler in the world! Now cheer for us now! Give it! Well, I don't think that could have been possible enough anymore. Well, it's almost Halloween. I think these guys should celebrate with some booze. The fan seems to be supplying quite a lot of them. Is it not scary enough that try by and hold all the titles? That's not scary. Oh, well, look at this, that's good of them, giving something back, they're pausing. It's ridiculous. How much longer have we got to put up with this? Long time, as long as that champions. Oh, thank God for that. Maybe this is an orchestra that they've arranged? But it's not a music I recognize. 
that's how we cross it on the pole stuff. It doesn't really sound like the sort of thing that you'd expect Tribad to listen to, though. Probably still get played at rock, mate. But Tribad are looking confused and we still have no one. Yeah, we're just. Is this not there? Going on. I'm not sure that well. Oh, hold on. Oh, I know who that is. That is Oscar Lee and Zane Freeman. Glad you know who that is. They have been making one hell of a name for themselves over at FTW. Oh, and Oscar Lee has a mic. Good question, Paddy. You want that? She'll make some noise! I am so, so glad you asked. See, I'm the one, and let's be honest, the most famous thing in North East Wrestling right now. with too much bass. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. And this is quite frankly the best up and comer in Zeng Freeman. Do we really have a match tonight? A tag match? We have a match. Oscar Lee and Zane Freeman versus Tribad. I'm assuming this is non-title. I don't know. I'm waiting for weird. I mean, I wasn't expecting Oscar Lee and Zane Freeman to turn up at all. Why would you? Oh, 
know I can't say I'm not grateful for it though Anything to stop Paddy Flanagan flap these gums So we moved from one, who's, who's the other fella? Zane Freeman, the golden boy himself A hell of an overcomer from FTW The golden boy Seat repeal there in Ciara T. I can't even have a go at you for that, I love a Star Wars reference. Okay, well, you've seen the know all about these guys, I've never seen them before. But as far as I'm concerned, they do not deserve a championship match. By all means, they're brave, they're challenging the tag team champions, the best team well, in the promotion. But really, put your money where your mouth is, try bad. You want to go on like you're the greatest, why not defend them? And the referee's having a chat with them here. And well, the referee's had a word with Tribad, and it looks it looks like this could be for the almost pro tag team championships. And there's our general manager, and all his minions have come out to uh, to say, "No, how dare you make a match?" You know why? Because he'd be quite happy for Tribad to lose those championships just out of spite. Well, the titles are in fact on the line. Tribar don't necessarily look uh, dressed to compete. No, they were dressed to party to celebrate. Oscar Lee and Zane Freeman could make one hell of an impact on their debut here. Imagine, imagine walking away with the tag titles on day one. Well, you've got to have a little bit of respect for the fact that they've come out and challenged the champions. The champions, though, certainly the, the pins in the corner, they could refuse the match. But they will feel that their honour would be besmirched if that was the case. Oh! And the biggest man in the ring there with arguably the smallest. That Hayden Tempest does not look impressed. Or fussed. Hayden Tempest flexing his strength there. There's a, a noticeable side, size difference. They will see him just past an Oscar aside. Crowder behind the newcomers. That referee is that the Jack Foster one. It is indeed. Otherwise known as X Jack. Well, not tonight, he's not. That one, that one there's Oscar Lee. Right? Oscar Lee, yes, the flamboyant one of the two. the troops. Oh, hold on! Ah, too smart for that. Oh, penalty kick to Paddy by Zane Freeman. Dodges the trip. Oh, and a shotgun drop kick of his own by Hayden Tempest. And there goes Oscar Lee with a toe base through the top of the middle rope. Held the ropes like a gentleman, although I'll tell you what, Oliver Barrett having none of this. Shock horror, the numbers game. Oliver Barrett causing the distraction. 
Buddy Flanagan attacking Oscar Lee from behind. Oh, and a body slam there. Oscar Lee kicks out at two. Doing that as well with the bulk of Paddy Flanagan on top of him. And it's crushed under the corner. Look at this. This is where you get to see the beauty of the tag team that is Tribad. Split tags. Oh, yeah, we're going to see, see in Freeman's interaction again. Oh, a better kick of Paddy. Taking out here in Tempest for Oscar Lee. Wipe out the tag team champions. Oh, Oliver Barrett just pulled down Tim Freeman there. What are you basing that on? The camera angle. No, all you saw was Oliver Barrett in shot. You saw nothing else. We're watching the same monitor here. Don't try to project on your favourites all the time. There wasn't even any need for it. Oscar, Paddy had us early. You completely grounded. As he does now. Imagine. Imagine this guy manages to swim out. He's done that before. Where we saw that sunset flick on Hayden Tempest. Imagine that he squirmed himself out of that and tagged in his partner. That ruins the game plan of Tribad. Think strategically, Pat Lapan. Think strategically. Oh, oh wow. Paddy Flanagan leaves his feet. You don't see that often. You see it quite often. It was him leaving his feet that managed to win him those tag team titles. Oh, and Inzaguri has stunned Paddy Flanagan there. Flanagan's fell out of the ring. Oliver Barrett's trying to, to pick him up and get him back in. But he's, his bell's being rang there. Knows where he is. Oscar Lee's close to getting a tag here. Oh, here comes Hayden Tempest and here comes Hayden Freeman. A big boot. Freeman in complete control here. Oh, and a version of a good buster there. Paddy's down. Oh, see Freeman struggling. Oh, what a forearm. Followed up by a neck breaker. And he had to get some height on that. Will it be enough? Not. Not quite. Hayden Tempest kicks out, but what a rally there by Zane Freeman. Hayden Tempest in trouble. Doesn't quite know where he is. Shotgun drop kick by Freeman. Straight into the burger box as well. Tags in Oscar Lee. What's Oscar Lee going for here? Oh! Took far too much time. Went for the boots on this, and there's a spear from Hayden Tim Paddy Flanagan took out Zane Freeman off the apron there. Got a cover. And Oscar Lee kicks out. This match continues. It was surprising considering he nearly speared him back to the holiday camp that he's clearly come from. Oh, Zane Freeman's managed to take out Hayden Tempest. Oh, what a big boot to Paddy Flanagan. Gets the tag in Freeman now, the legal man. What's he lining Paddy up for here? Oh, he's got him over his shoulders. Oh, here comes Hayden Tempest back into the match. Blocking Oscar Lee. Paddy's rolled down. Oscar Lee's been thrown out of the ring. Try battle comes in. Freeman up. Oh my god. And that's it. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the match and still the almost pro tag team champions. Try man. Well, I'll tell you what, Pastel Pan. They came out here for a celebration with their newly won championship. They wouldn't expect the match, they didn't have to go to match, but now it's a double celebration because they have now just defended on their very first title defense and they've done so successfully. Well done, Triban. Yes, it was one hell of an effort by Oscar Lee and Zane Freeman on their debut, but you can't discredit the tag champs.
they retain their almost pro tag team championships. And hopefully this won't be the last we've seen of Oscar Lee and Zane Freeman. Clearly a talented tag team. Here's a look back at some of the action. A huge springboard forearm followed by the neck breaker. And that's where it went wrong for Oscar Lee missing that moonsault. Apparently we needed a second announcement. But yes, still the tag champs. I think we should have a third announcement. It is tripod. The men that hold all the gold. Yeah, it almost pro. Well, it's true that anything can happen here at Shield Pro Wrestling, with Oscar Lee and Zane Freeman making their surprise debuts as challengers to the Almost Pro Tag Team Championships. Despite being unprepared for a match, Paddy Flanagan and Hayden Tempest managed to retain the titles. Now, before we continue with the action, we're going to head backstage, where it looks like we might find out why Nicky Starr was pulled from his Almost Pro title match. I need the match. Yes, I need the title. You can't take it out of the match, right? You lied for a start, okay? I've got it's your fine. Letter. It's fine. I've got your letter after your bit injury with Rev, right? Which you forged so that you could compete in a tag match against me, nonetheless. Then it's your anniversary. I mean, credit to you, winning a battle royal with the concussion and exactly. So it's fine. I won the match until I get a 100% clearance letter from a doctor. Right? I can't let you compete against Yes, you can. Right? Yes, you can. can. It's not happening. It's not happening, Nicky. I can't do it for your safety and for the liability of the company, man. Well, if I come, if I come, Russell, can I find a replacement? I know, I know a guy. I know a guy. He can take over for me. If, if you want a friend to replace me, go for a friend to replace me, man. I've got, I've got too much on it, right? Just you'll see. Go for it. You'll see. You'll see. Right, go for Thank you! We see you going Oh, no, I haven't seen you going Like, he's got some answering to do. Like, I've it now got a bandage to pass. Sucks what happened to you, man, and now, but I've not seen him. I didn't know where any of the Grunge City Revolution are. The, 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 I don't need an answer for some stuff, but, man, I can't help you, man. Don't worry, I'll find Well, it looks like Oliver Barrett will be in a match tonight as Nicky Starr's been granted permission to, to find a replacement, but Chase Stryker just suffered another assault at the hands of Jonah Phoenix. Yet again, Chase Stryker going to speak to the manager. He's got his just reward. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Well, this is a side of Jonah Phoenix that we're not used to seeing. The now former tag partner of Chase Striker. Oh my god, here comes Chase Striker! Oh, and that's what you'd expect, just attacks him from behind. You can't be serious after seeing what we just saw backstage. He was asking for him. He was holding him. If nothing else, right, one good thing out of all this, we didn't have to listen to that awful theme music of Chase Strikers. Chase Strikers being very lucky. Oh! Caught him with, it, with a bit of a super kick there. And so is this an official match? It is now. So we've seen backstage that Nicky Starr, the reason that he couldn't compete was because he was out with a concussion and he faked doctor's notes. Is that pretty It much was, that yes. If you look back at his match with Rev, Rev took away the turnbuckle pad, slamming Nicky's face into it, which knocked him out at the time. He suffered an injury to his throat and a concussion and has not yet been granted an official 100% clearance. Oh! And right. a series of suicide dives by Chase Stryker, the third one there. Yeah. Damn near living up to its name. 
but he managed to get some of it on Jonah Phoenix, who's back in the ring now. Well, he is, and he seems to be on fire against Jonah Phoenix, and you can understand why. However, my question is, he is clearly injured himself. We saw what happened. Oh, wow. We this saw what happened to Shield Oh. Oh, and he kicks out with two. We saw what happened at Shield Anniversary. We saw the punishment that was inflicted on him by Red Bull. We saw what happened with Jonah Phoenix in that chair. I mean, there was a lot of damage, and yet, and yet, we haven't seen our weird and wonderful management come out and do anything about that. Chase Striker has been cleared. He's banished up as a precaution. Another who won't be appearing tonight due to an injury received at Shield of Earth will be your friendly neighbourhood skateboard Yorkshire Dale who received uh, he will have his head glued back together after his match with Oliver Barrett Oliver Barrett also did receive a cut to the back of his head but it wasn't tougher. as serious That's what you're saying, Oliver Barrett is tougher I'll tell you what Tribad came out to celebrate their championships. They then celebrated the victory, and that's another celebration for me. Yorkshire Dale isn't here. Jonah Phoenix, though, he's really taking it to his, his former on-off tag team partner in Chase Stryker. Yeah, Stryker's in a lot of trouble here. Yeah, that, that shoulder may be bandaged up as a precaution, but it is a target. I am surprised that he's actually out here before me. I mean, we all saw what wow. happened. Ring steps, the chair. I mean, that arm must be in a thousand pieces. It's got a, he shakes it a rock like Lego in a Smarties tube. How that arm wasn't broken by Rev, I will never know. And then, after the stomp, wrapped in a chair by Jonah Phoenix post-match. <laughs> Clearly a lot more durable than we'll give him credit for is Chase Stryker. Well, he's going to have to be because look at Jonah Phoenix. Who now seems to be officially representing the Grunge City Revolution. Or oh, sorry, as it was announced, the Grunge City Rev. Dramatic pause. Revolution. Yes, it seems we have a new faction attempted to team over here at Almost Pro. It's not a faction, it's a state of mind. Have you not been listening to the Grunge City Prophet? You should. Well, I try not to, yeah, we're looking, looking back at how this match got started. Chase Striker wasted very little time. But he is on the receiving end of a beating right now. I was about to say maybe he's bit off more than he's two, two, but oh no! And Jonah Phoenix busted trying to use the rope for leverage. All he did was he was trying to get his. Oh! Strike has got him now! Oh, just a two! And Phoenix quickly back on top. I don't even know if this match is sanctioned. I mean. Like, was, was no. anything actually scheduled to happen today? This is the thing. He's come out and you see Jonah Phoenix is wearing, well, jeans. Again, another one who's like dressed for combat here. Yeah. Another two count, but Striker kicks out. But look at Phoenix. I mean, you talk about Chase Striker wanting to get some revenge. Jonah Phoenix clearly wants to fill in the gaps with why. And he's going to do that by just spraying that arm. <laughs> Look at that, he's holding it underneath him, he's trying to shelter it. That's smart, he's sheltering it. I'll tell you what would have been smarter if he hadn't come out here, if he hadn't turned up today and looked for trouble. How did he think this was going to go down? I mean, it's Oh, well, it looked like he had a little fight left in him. Jonah Phoenix knocks him straight to the ground with the right hand. Yeah. Look what he does. Look what he does, goes straight back to that arm and him in. Gets him down oh, on the ground, wow. middle of the ring, gets a submission hold on, on that arm. It may be wise for Stryker to live to fight another day and just tap out and get the hell out of there. I'm sure that's advice you've given him on numerous occasions. He doesn't seem to listen. He's managed to drag himself over. He's still a few inches away. Oh, he's got the ropes. Phoenix holding on three. Applying more pressure. Oh, and just stuns Chase Striker. 
Gets him back close into the middle of the ring. And then look at that, goes back to the arms. Nah. And applies nah. pressure to the neck and the spine nah. as well. I mean, nah. this is nah. not going to be nah. a pleasant nah. experience nah. for Chase Stryker. How much more punishment can Stryker take? Nah. I mean, Jonah Phoenix took his belt off here. What, nah. what the hell's he got nah. in mind here? Yeah? Nah. Nah. Oh, nah. He's not. That's the nah. bottle. Oh no, that's the nah. spiky bit. He's right in front of the referee. Yeah. Nah. He's, he's sticking him in the arm with yeah. the belt buckle right in front of the referee. What is going on? Well, the referee's finally taken it off him, but we've seen referees nah. take away chairs in matches, so. This, a, this is surely a disqualification. A ton of inconsistency. Surely a disqualification. How is Chase Stryker just. Well, you want. Match. Perhaps it's. It's no holds barred, perhaps it's, and who knows? Yeah, perhaps the referee is letting a, a lot go. Oh, German suplex. The sooner this match is over, the better for Chase Stryker. Oh. He's now getting his knee driven into the canvas. Looks like almost like doing a, a twister version of body parts as he goes around and just takes my, what, what's next? Left leg green. Oh! I mean, left leg red after that. Chase Stryker still refusing to give up. I don't even tell, he's incoherent. The referee might want to stop this. I mean, Jonah Phoenix should have been out of him. Stopped the second the belt buckle was driven into his eye. I can't fuck you with that. I've got no answer for it. On. Wow, Chase Stryker with a breath of life here. He's got the cover. Oh, and Phoenix kicks out at two. Chase Stryker, how has he got the energy? He needs to get back on top of him. Look at that, he even tried to clap his hand to stop doing it because his arm hurt that much. He still managed to pick up his opponent. Driven him into the corner. Chase Strike has only got one arm and one leg. Oh, what a stiff boot in the face there. Oh, 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 an ace crusher out of nowhere. Chase crusher. Oh, but Phoenix kicks out at two. Chase Strike, I don't know what to do. He's hoping that would be enough. It's not, and he's allowed Jonah Phoenix to just get to his feet, recover a little bit. Getting him up on his shoulders again, looking for that TKO. <laughs> Phoenix is wriggled off. Yeah. Oh, and an implant DDT. That's it. That is it. And Stryker gets his foot on the ropes. I'm sure that would have been great. He could have counted three in that time. Oh, a look back at that ace crusher, chase crusher. I, I think the referee was just trying to make amends for the, the earlier nonsense. Oh. The belt. oh, and that was a low blow. The referee could see that. Straight to the chase it was. It was a low blow, Rev. The referee's just refusing to count. What is happening? I'm confused, but maybe it wasn't a sanctioned match at all. Hey, a belt buckle, a low blow. This is a disqualification. I'm not sure what the referee actually saw the low blow, especially with all that hair in his eyes. And now Phoenix is bringing a chair into the match. He realizes that Chase Stryker doesn't have any limbs left. Oh! Oh, and he's hit himself. Stryker's got him up. Hits the TKO, and the referees call. What has happened in this match? The referees call for the bell. Chase Stryker finally had the match won, and the referees call for the bell. Hold on. I'm, I'm a little confused. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the match as a result of disqualification, Chase Stryker. Well, Chase Stryker has been given it by a DQ, and now we'll see on the replay. The low blow that was witnessed by the referee. Do we do it? 
three strikes and you're out, bro. You're almost blown now. I have no idea, but the win does go in favour of Chase Striker, despite taking a lot of punishment. But does he feel that he's got the revenge that he wanted? I, I don't think he'll, uh, he'll feel a sense of retribution after that. But it's definitely one in the win column. Only time will tell what is going to happen with the Grunge City Revolution and their victims. Well, we now know that Nicky Starr forged his medical note, which means he was competing in his last two matches without medical clearance. And what about that impromptu match between Chase Stryker and Jordan Phoenix? It seemed that Chase Stryker didn't get the retribution he thought he deserved, suffering another assault at the hands of Phoenix. Up next, we're going to see the debut of Alex Parker, a promising young talent all the way from Glasgow, and he's going one on one with Danny Edwards. <laughs> Yeah, the groans from the crowd. That must mean Danny Edwards is coming. You would think so, which means I am very happy. Brilliant talent. Look at that, he loves the sound of his own name, especially when it's being announced. Can't deny he's a talented young lad. I don't, but that attitude tends to rub everyone, and everyone, the wrong way. How on earth does that affect how you And that's the important thing here. But at the you minute don't get medals for participation. At the minute he hasn't been winning, he hasn't won since February when he debuted. Well it just shows the calibre of athlete we have here at Almost Pro. As the young man from Craig Lang competes again this evening. Look at these ties and trinkets. Let's urge the big box, little box, like it's the main thing. Alice Parker has arrived, and this one could go off like a firework. Well, he's certainly energetic. Looks very pleased to be here, and I'll tell you what, the fans here in South Shield seem to have taken to him already. Look at that, <laughs> so unimpressed, he's sitting on the ramp. Which is a shame because you can be nothing but impressed by Alex Parker. Well, we're yet to see what he can do. Word from the PBW Academy in Glasgow. Called him in such high regard. I'm so excited for this match. What a debut this should be. Of course, these two have faced each other before, north of the border. Danny Edwards was the victor there. And it would appear that they're bringing that rivalry down here to England. As not only is this Alex Parker's pro debut, this is his first match in England. And he wants some modicum of revenge, it seems, on a, a man who's already beaten him in their home country. Well, it could be that he's been thrown to the wolves here. Look at 
that as he I does his warm up, and that's very important. He needs to stretch out properly before a wrestling match. Danny Edwards doesn't seem too eager to get this match started. Young Alex Park, who doesn't really know the rules, he's just making sure the referees explain them to him. That makes perfect sense. Danny Edwards, who did ever so well at Shield Adversary. He did enter in at number two in the Battle Royale, making it all the way to the final four. He showed his toughness, different sort of style of match now. He's going to have to adapt. Tell me what you know about young Alex Parker. Well, Alex Parker has been training since the young age of 12 under the tuition of Kid Fight at the PBW Academy. Inspired to get into the business by the likes of NXT UK superstar Noam Dar. Now that's a fine role model to have. I'd like to see, very much to see, what he's taken away from the, the skills and style of Norm Dar. But as far as style goes, he likes, he's been a long time idol of Jeff Hardy, so he likes to bring that high fly and reckless style in, but he also likes to be a ground and pound striker. So I think we're going to see a nice blend of the two, I hope. Well, we'll see. So slightly more experience, but still young. Edwards. Edwards is another one that you can't discount his ability, it's just the attitude. The attitude, he can't get it done when it comes to picking up wins. Stop gloating. You couldn't do any better. And that's why I'm here with a microphone in my hand and not in the ring against Danny. I'm just comfy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look at that. Scouting. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Parker slides on that. Go for the arm drag. Blocked by Edwards. Oh, Parker wraps him up. Lands the arm drag on the other side. Oh, oh and a huge drop kick there. Counter for counter for counter for counter, followed by that drop kick. Oh. Danny Edwards trying to recoup in the corner, but. By Young Parker. Parker going up to the middle rope. Crowd are right behind the newcomers tonight. It's got any sights. Oh! A flying up a cut. This could be it. Early. No. Edwards kicks out. Edwards in a little bit. He couldn't put his foot on the ropes as well when he went for that pin. And he did it very quickly. That's, that's very impressive from the young lad. Fantastic ring awareness. Oh! Well, you talked about high flying. Danny Edwards is very aware of his abilities and what he can do there. So, what does he do? Go straight from the leg. And that makes a lot of sense. And we've seen early on that Alex Parker likes to leave his feet, but that's going to be difficult. If Oh, sticking elbows in that knee. Maybe they leave his feet at the hospital after that. Yep, it's going to be difficult to jump around those ropes with one leg. A flashback to some of the action from there. Parker early on. Running up a cut into the corner. Followed by a fly in a cut. Which is nearly gone on a three count. Well, in the meantime, Danny Edwards just dragging him out of the corner and beating on him mercilessly. Now it's his turn to drag him back into the centre. Got a chin lock on him there. Right in the centre of the ring as well. Very sensible. Parker not ready to give it up just yet. And you wouldn't expect him to, but that wears you down. It stops the air circulating around your body, and that's going to have an effect on your brain. It'll have an effect on how you think. It'll also wear you down. Well, the crowd getting behind him have given him a burst of energy as he tries to fight off from here. Four on with Danny Edwards. Edwards blocks the second one. Oh, what a Russian leg sweep! 
Look, kicks up. Look at the smoothness though from Danny Edwards. This is why I'm a massive fan of his. And you talk about attitude. I do. He is impressive, but as we've just seen there, the down point in this game is he talks to you. Right, let me ask you this. Does slapping hands with the fans, is that when you championships? Or is it the slap in the hand of the referee as it hits for three points in the ring? Because I'll tell you what, do you see the likes of Tribad, who will have a lot of championships here? Do you see them slapping hands with the fans? No. Judging his attitude is ridiculous. And I find him really pleasant. When I've spoken to him backstage, couldn't be more pleasant. Such a gentleman. I think they haven't really got a clue what he's saying, but... Talking again. Oh, Potter's got away from that spin and then bring out with a backslide. Oh, Danny Edwards rolls out of it. What's he going for here? Oh, wow! Into a power slam! Where did that come from? I'll tell you where it came from. Edwards, taking too much time talking. Give Alex Parker plenty of time to recover. Gotta be impressed with this young lad. And this is the thing, I, I wanted to see if any of Norm Dar's influence would come in here with him being a fan. And this is what happens with Norm. What he'll try to do is work out his opponent's strengths, he'll wrestle them, see what he's got, and he'll adapt. And this is exactly what I'm seeing from young Alex Parker. He definitely, as he dodged that spinning neck break, I managed to get it into a backslide and then pull out that power slam. And here comes Alex Parker with a clothesline in a second. Oh wow! Takes out the legs of Edwards. And what's coming? Oh! A vicious slide in there into the temple of Danny Edwards. Edwards is rocked. Do you think the temple of Danny Edwards is where he goes for Sunday services? That is the self proclaimed proof of perfection. I wouldn't put it past him. Oh! A huge missile drop kick from the top rope. Oh, but only a two count. Danny Edwards kicks out. Who oh, was close to the ceiling with that? You see the height. Danny Edwards is just reeling right now. Oh, Edwards is smart enough to, to roll under the ropes. Get himself a breather, but Alex Parker has gone straight after him. Oh, and he hangs him up on the top rope. Oh, whips in that spin of neck break, and this could be it. Odd Parker kicks out. Danny Edwards is not impressed with the record. It's the closest Edwards has come to a victory. Well, for a while. He needs to stop. Shout at the crowd and get on top of Alex Parker. I mean, there, there he goes again. He's giving Parker way too much time to recover. You're absolutely right. And there it is. Parker's got a roll up on him. Oh, Edwards kicks out with two. Edwards blocks a super kick there. Got him up on his shoulders. He's going for that Death Valley driver. He hits it. This could be it. Edwards' first win since February. Oh, Parker kicks out with two. for the cover again and Parker still can't be held down. Edwards is looking distraught. And look at Parker though, he seems to be getting his third or fourth wind right now and he needs it. Danny Edwards is straight back there and just choking him with his boot on the ropes. He's got a five count to use there before he gets disqualified. Just pulling him by the hips, disrespecting his opponent there. He's going for that Death Valley driver again. He's got him up. Parker slips down. Sends him off. Again. Oh! Shut up! Shut Oh, Parker with a knee! He's covered him! Oh, Alex Parker picks up the win on his debut! Well, he said that he wanted to get a win here, not just on his debut in, at Almost Pro, but his debut 
in England, and it's against a guy who's got a win on us up there north of the border in Scotland. And I bet this young man's very proud right now. Well, you have to be impressed with the debut of Alice Park. That's some of the action down here, but it's looking like he had it won with that. With the spin neck breaker and the Death Valley driver, but Alex Parker kicks out. And then I went no way driving the knee into the jaw of Edwards. And that was enough for the one, two, yeah. His first win here at Chill Pro and his first win in England. And he ties up the rivalry with Edwards at one apiece. Gotta wonder, where does Danny Edwards go from this? Yes, Danny Edwards still unable to find what it takes to get that elusive victory. But when do we get to see Alex Parker again? That was just fantastic. And we're going from impressive debuts. Up next, we're going to have women's championship action as Rosie Knight defends the title for the first time here at Almost Pro against Molly Spot. Alex Parker there with an impressive debut, picking up a win against Danny Edwards. He was still searching for his first win since making his debut back in February. That's almost all we have time for in part one, but before we go, we can head back to the arena where the Almost Pro Women's Championship will be on the line. Earlier this month, Rosie Knight said that she didn't want to sit on the sidelines while she waited for a contender to the title. She wanted to be a fighting champion, and so she closed the Women's League. That being said, she now faces her first contender, Molly Spartan. Indeed she is, and what a challenger. Yes, the beautiful Boozer. She was the last person to have gained points in the Women's League before it was disbanded, and was she ever the first on the phone when it broke that Rosie Knight had took away the Women's League, wanted nothing but challengers for her title. Molly Spartan straight in, was the last to get points, was the one that deserved the title, and she was the first person management said yes to. One of the few times that the management here, if you can call it that, and almost Pro have actually made a good decision. Well, Rosie Knight wants it. She doesn't want to sit at home waiting for contenders. She wants to defend that title constantly, every time she appears. She wants to be a fight champion. She has her first opportunity. Ah, she has first opportunity. It's actually her second. She actually defended the Almost Pro Women's title and she the best rematch over at Empire Wrestling as she took on Angel Hayes and was victorious. Well, it all comes down and to her opponents. Yes, yes, she comes. I've never seen anyone get behind someone so quickly as the almost pro face will have to Rosie Knight. The champ is in the building. 22 year old from Glasgow who managed to take that title from Angel Hayes. It was a complete shock. Rosie Knight fought, fought, fought with a, with a, with a bit of a rivalry with Marcy Wilde who later quit after being unable to hold Rosie Knight down. Knight got herself six points. Knight got herself a shot at the title at Shield Anniversary. And against all odds, Rosie Knight walked out of the biggest show of the year, the Almost Pro Women's Champion. See, she did in brave words that she wants to disband the league and defend that title on a regular basis. I mean, that's big words. Can't she live up to them? Well, we'll find out because she's got a big challenger in the mighty Molly Spartan. 
the beautiful bruise that will definitely not be underestimated by Rosie Knight. There's a distinguishable size difference. Molly Spartan has all the power walking into this, I would call it a David and Goliath situation. Certainly the strength and probably the height advantage is good to Molly. But Rosie Knight's got a lot of heart and a lot of energy. The question is, is that going to be enough? Well, she's definitely got that, uh, to use a football reference, the 12th man advantage as the almost pro arena is right behind her. Chanting the champ's name. No, oh, not too impressed with that. Once again, I've never seen the almost pro arena get behind a competitor quite as much as we've seen them get behind Rosie Knight. It's been... Uh, to, Overuse the court of the day to university after being out for five minutes. Uh, she has 100% support from the almost pro faithful. Well, kids done all right. Let's see what you can do tonight. This is a massive test for her. Does she have the championship credentials to get past the likes of Molly Spot? Who is hungry for that title? As you say, she's the last one to get points here in the Women's League. She should be right up there, and she is. This is her chance. And look at that, she's trying to power up against the much bigger Molly Smart. That's some early advice for the champ there. Molly Spartan telling her to stay down. Molly Spartan doesn't mess about. I mean, she's here for championships, and why else would she be here? There's no other, she wants to be the absolute top of the division. Brilliant analysis. Thanks for that. Let's go hard or go home, let's get the title or nothing. Molly Spartan has been wrestling now for over five years. Trained by the likes of Wolfgang, BT Gunn, and of course the late Gunn Lionheart. She has such a pedigree behind her. Rosie Knight, mind you, she's also got a, a great trainer, of course, in his face. He's certainly had a hand in her training. Yes, the current Shield Pro Wrestling heavyweight champion. And head trainer of the Premier British Wrestling Academy in Glasgow. Another test of strength coming. Oh, oh it's not. She's, she's flummoxed her. I'm not surprised. That's the right thing to do. I am surprised. Oh, Rosie Knight's oh. saying Dizzy the challenge round. She's got a roll up here. Oh, two count. What a shot. She's got the challenge off our game, yeah. Oh. What a spinning head scissors. Molly Spartan not quite sure which way is up there. Well, she's done the right thing. She's just gone outside just to rest for a little bit. Oh, this could be a downfall. What's Rosie Knight going to do here? Oh, and a top here through the middle rope. Actually takes down Molly Spartan. Looks as if she may be going for it again. Molly needs to be aware. She's already taken down the challenge at once. Oh, not this oh, time. Oh, Molly Spartan catches her. Oh, and rams her into the steel ring post. Far more powerful and experienced. Molly Spartan there was well aware, and I think the fans kind of gave it away a little bit. He said, whoa, chance. I'm going to see it again. Molly Spartan puts her out there, driving that spine into the steel ring post. Advantage, Molly Spartan. Just picking her up like a small sack of tatties. <laughs> Snap her out of the corner by the challenger. He just locks the legs in as well. Trapped there with those powerful thighs. And you've got to think how. Oh, oh look wow, at driving the head of the champion into the canvas. Just come Bobby Lance and must recover. Kick out by the champ. 
mentioned before, there's a lot of heart and a lot of energy coming from Rosie Knight. Yeah, but can that overcome the sin of professional wrestling? Molly Spartan. Oh, oh, Rosie Knight's yes. dodged it. No. Well, normally, I mean, no. Molly had put all of her power into that, and normally you'd expect no. Rosie Knight just to rattle off the turnbuckles, not this time. Kicks to the chest by the champion. Obviously done her homework. Well, she definitely came into this match with a game plan. Knowing that her opponent is bigger and stronger, she's finding every way to get around that. But that might not have been the best strategy. Just, oh, oh, that oh, was oh. beautiful backbreaker. Put out the air once again, but that's a kick out of two. That was an absolute thing of beauty. We should hang that in the tape, Modern. She can taste this title. Oh, Molly Spartan going for the. Oh, a delayed vertical suplex. Just showing the power there. How impressive. Goes for the cover. And a kick out again by the champion. What's Molly Spartan going to do here? The longer this match goes, the more it favours the challenger, Molly Spartan. Well, you, you would absolutely say that, and you'd be right to say that because the amount of punishment she's dishing out. and You've got to wonder, how much can Rosie Knight take? Picking up the champ again. Oh, and a sidewalk slam. Pavement. We're British. Look at the state now of the champion. She's just flattened there, like a bit of chewing gum on a pavement. Will she be regretting her words of uh, her words and actions of disbanding the women's league? Well, you say that, but she still would have to compete at some point. This way, she's at least ring sharp. And you've got to give her this. She is incredibly brave, and she's hiding from no one. Where is she getting this energy from? Oh, it's a Curry. Both women down. Molly Spartan did not see that coming. We're going to see it again. Stop it! Punches the leg and suffers. Poor punt at the temple there. Oh, and Spartan went for a spear to the corners and the big ball. Oh my God, Rosie Knight pulled it off. Well, let's get the official word. Yes, she is. And you wouldn't have bet on it either. <laughs> Molly Spartan was dominating this match. Absolutely, with the credentials and the ability of Molly Spartan, the power advantage, the experience advantage, the skill advantage, I would absolutely have picked Molly Spartan all day, but this young lass has got so much pluck about her. Yes, Rosie Knight has all the heart in the world to keep going, and she does it that she knew she couldn't get around the strength and size of Molly Spartan, so she used her speed, her quickness, and the fact that she's a small, petite character to get the advantage. Took it out the way there for the finish as Molly Spartan shoulder tackled a ring post. And in the shock of, of that impact, Rosie Knight was managed to roll her up for the three count and retain. And here we're going to see it again. Thrown in the corner, goes out the way, shot out of the ring post, Molly Spartan Rock retains the almost pro women's championship. And as I've said before, the almost pro people get one hundred percent behind their almost pro women's champion. Rosie Knight has been nothing but impressive since making her debut here at Shield Pro. And now that the Women's League is no more, how long can she hold on to that championship? As contenders will be knocking at the door whenever she shows her face here in the Almost Pro Arena.
she couldn't have faced a bigger challenge in her first title match than going up against the might of Molly Spartan, but Rosie Knight successfully retains the almost pro women's championship. Now that the women's league is no more, who will be next to step up and face Rosie Knight for the title? That's it for part one. Join us later for part two where we'll see the fallout from Shield Adversary, including Maxie's first wrestling appearance in five years. Also, will Nikki Starr have found a replacement to face Oliver Barrett in the main event? Don't forget to get yourself to shieldpro.co.uk to buy tickets for our next live event on November 30th. See you next time.